0.001. And I will import it into my Azure DevOps account like this. Did you notice what I'm doing? I'm using Azure DevOps demo generator and using Azure DevOps demo generator, I'm just importing an existing project into my current DevOps organization. So when you do this and click create button, a new project called parts 001 will be created in your Azure DevOps account. Can you try this? Yeah. OK, yeah, I will repeat again. So what I want you to do is I have shared a link with you as your DevOps demo generator. So go to as your DevOps demo generator and in the selected template, click on choose template and select Sparse Unlimited. OK, provide a name, select your DevOps organization name and click create project button. But please remember when you visit this website, initially it will ask you to sign in. Uh, don't use company email address. Sign up with your personal account. It's because as your DevOps demo generator require access to the subscription. OK, it's better to use personal account.
OK, let's do one thing. Let's hit the create project button and wait for project to be created. Just wait for it. Make sure you have selected a correct, correct organization name. Importing a project should take some time and in case if you are not able to see that project. What we are actually doing is we are copying an existing project, a demo project in our Azure DevOps account. OK, demo project which has Azure board, repositories, pipelines, everything. OK, to save the time. Uh, it's creating a project on behalf of you. It might take a couple of minutes and once it is done, you should be able to navigate to the project. OK, fine. So once it is done, I will navigate to the project. Now this is my sample project called parts 001. Now if you explore, you will find Azure board has already saw lots of work items in there. And Azure repo already have a ASP.NET 4.5 application inside it. Can you explore it?
OK, so this is the sample project now. OK, so we got the sample project with. A repository you will notice in this repository there is a master branch. Now what I want you guys to do on your same project, go to the Git repository. Create a new branch. You can create a new branch using this button, new branch button. Create a new branch, then inside that new branch, modify a simple file, any file by the by the way, or you can even create a new file in new branch and then raise a pull request. Can you try that now? Yeah, sure. What I'm actually asking you to do is once you get the repository, I want you to create a new branch. So just go to the repos. Once the project is created, click on repos files. And here this is the repository and you will notice in this repository right now the default branch is master. So go and select a new branch, create a new branch inside that new branch. Probably create a new readme file. Commit the changes and then raise a pull request.
Yeah, after you create a pull request, make some changes, commit the changes, create a pull request. After pull request, first approve the request and then click on finish or complete button. Yes, there is only one user, Harvinder. You are using a free personal account, right? So you don't actually have anybody else to review your code. So right now, just as a practice, we are raising pull request and the person who has created a pull request is the same one who's going to approve it as well. In real life scenario, they should be two different people, right? No, just complete the uh, pull request, complete the merge. Deleting branch is optional. Any file, or you can just create a new readme file. Just create a new readme file then. OK, good. So you are able to use the pull request here. Fine. Let's proceed now with the next. Now the next thing to work on. As your pipelines, what basically is as your pipeline? Let's take, for example, this project. This is ASP.NET project, ASP.NET 4.5. I believe. And in order to this build this project, you need Visual Studio or you need Visual Studio command line tools, MS build, for example, to build it. Now, how do I build this project, run the test cases if there are any present, right? And then finally, you know, kind of package it, make it ready, prepare it for the deployment. That's what continuous integration workflows do. A typical continuous integration workflow will have multiple steps in it. Let's see the continuous integration workflow by looking at Azure Pipeline. Did you notice there is an existing sample pipeline included in this sample project? Hello? Can you see the sample project pipeline in the sample project right now? There is one pipeline in the sample project. Parts Unlimited E2E. If you click on it, the pipeline was never run. But if you click on Edit button, you can see the steps involved in this pipeline. Now, Azure DevOps actually have support for two different types of pipelines. Number one, classic pipeline. The one you are looking at right now is a classic pipeline. And what is number two? Any idea? What is the other type of pipeline? Other type of pipeline is YAML pipeline that we will discuss in few minutes. So we have classic pipeline and we have a YAML pipeline. We have in total two different types of pipeline. Classic pipeline works with all other technologies. There is no pipeline in it, Manish. OK, fine, no worries. I will show you how to create a new pipeline as well. OK, so in case if you don't get any pipeline, you can create a new empty pipeline from here. Just go to the pipeline. Let's ignore this recently run pipeline. Let's assume many of you don't have the pipeline ready. So what I will do, I will show you how to create a new one, a fresh one. How to create a new fresh pipeline that I'll show you. So click on new pipeline button. And then you can choose whether to create a YAML pipeline using these options 
or use classic editor pipeline, which is here. I would recommend right now to create a classic pipeline. Use classic pipeline, classic editor, and then it will ask me detail like what pipeline to create. Now, what pipeline we are planning to create right now? Anyone? We are creating a pipeline that use Git repository. Yeah, no worries. I'll go one step back. Go to the pipelines. This is the option on the left hand side for pipelines. Once go to pipeline, click on new pipeline. Click on new pipeline. And when you click on new pipeline, you get all these options. Kindly ignore them and use this link instead to create a classic pipeline. OK, uh, there might be one thing. Uh, new Azure DevOps account may or may not allow you to create classic pi pipeline. If that is the case, I will give you a solution. Click on Azure DevOps and go to organization settings. Go to organization setting if that link is disabled for you. Go to organization settings. From organization settings, check for pipelines. Is the pipeline option? Users, project, billing, policies, permission, process, agent pool, deployment pool, parallel job, repositories. OK, I guess we should then. Yeah, as your classic pipeline is planning to be retired. OK. So let's see where is the option here to change that option. OK, pipeline settings. Hello, let's go to the pipeline settings. OK, I will show you where is the option under pipeline. There is a settings button and in the settings button. If I scroll down, there is an option to enable or disable classic pipeline. Now looks like my AWS, uh, sorry, my Azure DevOps account is a new account, right? Oh, oh yes, option is there. Can you see this option disable creation of classic build pipeline? This must be off. Can you check this? This must be by default switched on in your case. I want you to switch this option off. Disable classic pipeline creation. OK, so this option should allow you. No, not for release pipeline. Just enable it for continuous integration or classic build pipeline only. This way you should be able to create the classic pipeline like this. First enable it and then try creating a new pipeline. OK, fine. So what we do is. After you enable classic pipelines, go to pipeline, new pipeline, scroll down and use option use classic editor. 
Now, when you use use classic editor, you will be presented with a choice. Where is your source code? Say that your source code is on Azure repo Git. Your source code right now is on. OK, so now who's this? Manish, this setting can be enabled and disabled only in personal account. If you are using your organization username to log in into Azure DevOps, this setting cannot be modified by you. That's why I'm repeatedly saying to use personal account. On personal account, you are the administrator user. A personal account means at the rate Outlook, at the rate Hotmail. Do not use at the rate your organization name account. There are certain policies which cannot be modified by you. It must be modified by subscription owner. OK, fine. So as soon as you select this, it will show you the project name, the repository name, accept this by default options. Branch name is master and continue. So we are creating it for master branch. Then it will either allow you to create an empty pipeline with nothing inside it, or you can choose a template. Now, don't you think this ASP.NET template matches with our requirement right now? Because yes, this is a .NET project. So I'm going to choose an existing template ASP.NET and click apply. This will create a template or this will create a pipeline with a ready to use ASP.NET template. So when I hit apply, I get these type of steps in my pipeline. Just very. OK, fine. So now that pipeline is ready. I hope all of your pipeline is ready now. So you will notice this is the main pipeline name of the pipeline. You can change pipeline properties from here. For this pipeline, this is the pipeline name. This is the agent pool name. This is the agent that it is going to use internally Windows 2019 machine. And this is the solution file name. Now because it is a ready to use template, what I have done is I have used a ready to use template. So Instead of a specific project name, it is using wildcard. Now even this wildcard will work, but let's change this. Click on the three dot button and make sure you select your solution file. OK, did you notice what I did? Instead of a pattern, I have selected the actual project folder using the three dot button. Fine, so this is the main property. Second, get the source from Azure repo. That's fine. Then it contains a job. And inside a job, the tasks are number one, get the latest version of NuGet package manager. Then 
use NuGet Restore to download all the .NET dependencies. Then Visual Studio command line to use to build this project. Run the Visual Studio test uh, test cases. Publish the build symbols, and finally collect the .dll file built by this project or already packaged application that you need to copy now. OK. Yes, so this is the final one. Once it is done, I'm going to hit save and Q button and it will trigger the build. Now there is a small trouble here, by the way. If I click save and build, it will start building. But for all of you, it will not directly build the pipeline. A solution file is basically a, uh, a project configuration file for .NET, which contains all the detail about that solution. Actually, it's an XML document. That solution file is actually an XML document without .XML annotation, XML extension. Instead, it uses SLN extension, and this file is created by Visual Studio. OK, fine. So now let me hit the save and queue button. This will work on my system because I'm using an old subscription. But for you, by default, you don't get access to the build agent. I will explain the concept of build agent to you. Just give me a minute first. Now that project it's saved and built, you can see the build log. Right now, agent job one is currently running, and this is the console. Yeah, click on save and queue, Ritesh, but then tell me what error you get when you try to run it. So you can see the build is happening. It has gone through all these steps. Check out get NuGet dependencies, build solution. Now it's running JUnit test cases. Sorry, VS test test cases, and then finally it will collect the build article.
So finally, the build is complete now. Yes, you all are getting this error, and this is the recent change. Not recent, actually. This has been done by uh, more than one year back. Uh, what Microsoft has done, Microsoft has gave ha, have given this feature to everyone, but there is a small twist. Azure Pipeline is now on-demand service. On-demand means you have to request Microsoft to provide parallelism or to provide parallel job support or agent support, self uh, Microsoft hosted agent support. So you have to fill up a form. And then Microsoft will give you one parallel job after approximately 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. So what you have to do is you all are getting this link in the error message. So what you have to do is open this link in a browser window, same browser window in a different tab, and it will give you a some small form for you. This is for users to increase parallelism in Azure DevOps. Right now, number of parallel job given to you are zero, and you want to increase this to one. Oh, sorry, it's not 24 hours. It's two to three business days now. So you need to provide your name, your email address with which you have signed up on Azure DevOps, right? And name of Azure DevOps organization, and select here that you want it for the either public or private project. Select private, then you don't have to select project name and submit. That means even though Microsoft is saying that Azure DevOps pipeline is free, you have to demand for the free tier. Are you getting my point? You have to fill up a form. And after two to three days, they will give you access to the build agent. So that's why it's failing. OK, uh, Manish, I guess you are using a wrong sample template where after building ASP.NET application, it is also trying to deploy it on Azure. And in order to deploy to Azure, you need to provide. You need to provide. Azure subscription. Uh, I guess even for the students, it's the same thing. You have to fill up a form and claim parallel jobs, one parallel for free.
Okay, number three. Uh, what is name of your DevOps organization? Your organization name is this. Like for me, it is Mahindra Unlimited. No, not the college name. It's the DevOps organization name. OK, for me, I guess the test cases are failing. I'm not sure why test cases are failing. Uh, what I can do is, by the way, I will just edit this and modify one task. Let me remove the test assembly task. This will make sure. That because there is no test assembly task, rest of the pipeline should work just fine.
Okay, fine. So with this, my build is successful, but let us try to understand what just happened now. Okay, so let me show you or let me tell you what exactly did happen in this case. Okay, so what I what exactly did happen? The actual Azure pipeline is actually just a document. A document. Whereas in order to carry out all the task mentioned in this pipeline, you need an actual machine who can carry out all these instructions. So that machine is called your build agent. Actually, build agent is a small package that you run on top of an existing machine. So what all things you need to have in that machine, which is going to act as a build agent? Yes, so you need a machine either cloud or on premise. It could be a cloud VM. It could be an on premise VM. It should have build agent. Now, other than build agent, it also need to have some kind of language. SDK like for example, .NET SDK must also be installed in here for this build agent to work. For the build agent to work, there must be all the tools already pre-installed on it like .NET SDK, .NET Runtime and .NET SDK for example. So the pipeline will be sent over to the build agent and you know what build agent will do? Build agent is going to read the documents the pipeline document and carry out all the tasks. Initially, all the new Azure DevOps users get zero pipelines agent. How many agent? Zero agent. Is there a way to find out how many pipeline agents you have? Go to the Azure DevOps organization, organization setting, and under organization setting, let's search for parallel jobs. Where I want you to search? Parallel job. Can you see how many parallel jobs I get per month? I'm getting one free parallel job. Check how many parallel jobs are assigned to you. How many parallel jobs you are getting? Can you check? Check that quick. Yes, exactly. That's why your execution failed because you had zero Microsoft hosted parallel job. Parallel job literally means how many build a job you can run parallel to each other. Zero parallel job means you won't be able to run one. And if there is free one parallel job, that means you can run one build at a time. And what if you have two or more parallel jobs? In that case, it means you can run those many pipelines at the same time parallel to each other. OK. Yes, now there are a number of different values. Microsoft hosted private project, self hosted private project, Microsoft hosted public project and self hosted public project. So you will notice for me right now for public project, I get 10 parallel jobs from Microsoft. That's two reasons behind that. 
Number one, my Azure DevOps account is more than four, five years old. OK, and number two, I, I have Visual Studio Enterprise account, MCT account, where I get more number of pipelines than normal free tier users. OK, that's the reason. So you might not get 10 Microsoft hosted pipeline for public, right? Self hosted pipeline agent means the one that you set up manually. You can have maximum two. As per my subscription, I can have maximum two self hosted pipeline agent for private project. But for public project, there is no limit on how many self hosted agent I can provision. This is because I'm using quite different subscription than yours. OK, so numbers would be different in your case and numbers are different in my case. OK. Under public project means projects which are open to everyone, like for example, remember initially when I shared my my shuttle project with all of you, that was public project. Anyone can actually go and see the project detail that is public self hosted means. Right now, Microsoft is giving me a pipeline agent and I didn't do any configuration for that, but for self hosted agent, there is lot of configuration required. You have to install as your pipeline agent package on a machine and that machine could be your on premise machine or it could be. A cloud VM you can install it anywhere either on cloud or on your on premise machine, but you have to configure it, maintain it manually. On the other hand, Microsoft agent is freely available to you without any kind of configuration. Freely means you can con you do not need any kind of configuration to start using it. Self hosted agent you have to configure, install and maintain. OK. Fine. So when you run pipeline, what exactly happened? Microsoft provide one of its many available VMs to you. Now, how many VMs Microsoft will provide to you? It depends on this number. Like right now, I have only one parallel job, right? So Microsoft will give you only one VM at a time. So Microsoft will provide the VM which is pre configured and my project will get built into that particular VM and after project build is complete, the VM will be deallocated or it will be passed on to other users. Now this is why it reuses a concept of build queue. What is build queue? All your projects will go to a build queue. Now what happens if instead of just one project, you have 10 projects to build? How many projects you have to build? 10. Then how many parallel jobs you have? Now what happens if you have only one parallel job? How many parallel jobs? Your parallel jobs count is set to just one and there are multiple projects you need to build. You know what will happen in that case? Any idea? Any guess? Let's say this is build a queue and there are multiple projects in this queue. Now all the projects in the queue will be processed sequentially. How they will be processed? Sequentially. So project one will be sent first to this parallel job. Parallel job will get it run. 
then project two will go, then project three will go. This is what do you mean by parallel job count set to one? That means only one project will execute at a time. Other has to wait. Separate processing. But what happens if you have two parallel jobs? What happens if you have two parallel jobs? If you have two parallel jobs, that means you basically have two different build agent. Right? So if you try to run two different projects, one of your project will go to agent one and other project will go to agent two. Is that clear? This is benefit of having parallel job. Is that clear now? In case if parallel job is one, parallel job count is one, all the projects will run sequentially. Like one project has to wait for other one to finish. Only then second project will be built. But if you have more than one parallel job, it's like this. Improve your overall execution performance. OK, project one is dependent on project two. Then you have to order them accordingly. Like inside project one, you have to add a manual task, a manual task that will start building project two as soon as project one is complete. Yes, you can do that kind of organization. Right there in your pipeline, you can configure that. Let me show you. So in case if you already have a pipeline created, just go to the pipeline and inside the pipeline you can add a step to start or to launch other pipeline after this pipeline is completed. OK, what you can just do is go to the trigger and can you see this? Hello. What does it mean? It means after this pipeline is completed, go and run the other pipeline. But there is only one restriction. Both the pipelines must be in the same project for this feature to work. For this feature to work, both the pipelines should be in the same as your DevOps project. OK, so that's how you can sequentially arrange them, the pipeline. Now, this is a regular classic pipeline. A new trend is now growing in Azure DevOps, which is to use YAML pipeline. So let me show you that option. If you now click on pipeline, new pipeline, you can see here there is an option to create a new YAML pipeline from Git repository, Azure repo. Did you notice the option available here? So there is option available to create new Azure repo pipeline or Git based YAML pipeline. Just select the repository name and it will generate a pipeline code automatically for you. Can you see this? Hello, uh, looks like the code was already there. So you will notice this is a YAML file where everything is described. VS build, copy files, everything is described properly. OK, this is a multi-stage pipeline which is available. OK, I will repeat it again. No worries. Click on new pipeline. After you select new pipeline, there is an option for Azure Repo Git. So I will select this option, Azure Repo Git, and then select the repository name. And if there is already a YAML pipeline present, it will pick that file or it will give you a new empty. In this project, there was already a pipeline available. So as soon as you select the repository name, 
the existing pipeline will show up. This is YAML pipeline. It's described using YAML pipeline. This time we are using YAML pipeline, not the classic pipeline. Let me repeat. Creating YAML pipeline is relatively easy. New pipeline and choose the Azure repo. Get. OK, like this. Sorry. Now please remember one thing. The YAML pipeline depends on which branch you have created it. Like there will be a different YAML pipeline in a master branch and different YAML pipeline is a uh, pipeline in dev branch like that. OK, now the best practice wise, Sumit. The best practice wise is use YAML pipeline as a default. Use classic pipeline in only exceptional scenarios. Like for example, YAML pipeline are used only with Git version control system. But if you are using, if you are not using Git, if you are using TFPC or SVN, then you must create classic pipeline. Is that clear? But if your repository is Git, then you must create YAML. For non-Git repository, you can use classic pipeline because classic pipeline supports all the version control system, including Git. YAML pipeline, on the other hand, depends on Git version control system only. Okay. So you use this. Yeah, this is this was already there in repository. In case if there was no pipeline already created, you will get a blank YAML file and you have to start writing code. It was already there as your pipeline.yml file was already present earlier. It had just picked that up. YAML file is basically a text file, so you can edit it like any other text file. But if you want syntax assist, what you can do is let me show you an example. Let's say, for example, you want to modify this particular task, VS build task. Keep a mouse pointer on the setting. Click it and you can see the setting of this particular task. Can you see it? You can edit it like this. In case if you want to add a new task, just move your cursor somewhere like here. Search for whatever task you wish to add, right? Click on it, provide the detail and when you click add, it will be added here. Can you see that? This is how you can add a new task. Please remember it's a YAML file, right? It's a YAML file, so you have to follow the YAML file rules. Now, in case if you want to create a new one, let me show you how it can be done. There was already a YAML file, so if I click on new YAML, it will just pick the existing one like this. But in case if you want to create a new one, I will show you how to create a new one. So initially, the empty YAML file, you can start adding contains like this. First, the trigger. Now, what kind of triggers are available here? 
triggers are available for a particular branch, let's say master branch. After that, the first task I'm going to add here is jobs. Inside jobs, let me write the name of the job. Name of the job is, let's say, build. Then what do I need to add inside this job? You can add name of the agent pool. Now, name of the agent pool, let me write here. Uh, how do I write Microsoft hosted agent pool? Wait a second, let me just bring back the old contents. Yeah, VM image. You have to specify what VM image to use if it is Microsoft hosted. You can have options like Windows or Ubuntu, right? Or even Mac OS. Then define the variables, define the stages and jobs. Okay. Can you try creating a pipeline like this? I know you won't be able to execute it because of parallelism limit, but just try to create it. There is already a YAML file. You do not have to write anything. It should just pick the existing file when you try to create a new YAML pipeline.
Okay, uh, fine. Uh, okay, you want me to show classic pipeline creation? I will. I can show you that. Just a minute. When you click on new pipeline, please make sure that you do not select anything from here and instead use use classic editor. Okay, then it will ask you for the repository name. Select the repository name, click continue, and then choose a template ready to use template. Let's say ASP.NET for this project. It will create the ready-made pipeline, classic pipeline for you. Okay, fine. I hope you all, all of you have tried the as your pipelines. Now, pipelines are actually used for two different purposes. Build pipeline for CI and release pipeline for CD. CI and CD. Okay, let me do one thing. I will just show you how to create an empty pipeline, for example. So what I will do now, please remember there is already a pipeline created for me. So I will delete this pipeline file. Okay, now let me try to create a new pipeline. Now, because the YAML file do not exist already, because the YAML file do not already exist. Oh, this is classic. That's fine. I can just leave it. Okay, let me create a new pipeline from here. New pipeline. I'm going to use option as your repo git, select the repository, and now it will also ask me for the template. Earlier, it did not ask me for template because there was already a .yaml file present in my git. Now there is no such file, so it's asking me to choose a right template. Let me use this ASP.NET, and this is the generated one. Can you see the generated pipeline? And by the way, it's not just for this. There are many other template types also available. Like for example, if you are, if you know that the application you are building is not ASP.NET, but something else like Gradle project, Golang project, Maven project, Node.js projects. Can you see there are different pipeline for different environments? Yes. Obviously, if I use Maven pipeline, this is not going to work because there is no Java project in current repository. So this is going to fail, but there are ready-made templates available. That's my point. If there is a YAML file already present, it will just pick that existing YAML file. And if there is no such YAML file, means file with name Azure pipeline.yml, then it will create a new one. The template can be used as a starting up or base template. You might have to add additional steps into it regularly later on. Later on, you might have to add few more tasks or few more steps into it. Best way to learn is start with classic pipeline. Because in classic pipeline, you can do drag and drop add uh, use the ui to build the pipeline okay and once you are done you can then start using yaml pipeline later for building a yaml pipeline you have to study the yaml syntax okay OK, I hope you have explored the YAML pipeline as well by now. OK. So these are the build pipeline. Now build pipeline is fine. This is CI continuous integration. Right? What about the next component, which is continuous delivery and deployment? Where is option to create pipeline for that? Now you can create a pipeline for that. What you can basically do is click on the releases button. Can you see the releases button under pipeline? This is for release pipeline. In Azure DevOps, 
we call them release pipeline. Continuous deployment pipeline or CD pipeline, CD workflows, we call them release pipeline. Okay, release pipeline has only one simple task. Take the already built application and deploy it on some server and run some test on it. Okay, so this is the release pipeline. Can you just go and check the release pipeline, the existing release pipeline in Parts Unlimited project? OK, looks like for you pipeline was not created. Fine, no worries. I can show you how you can create a new release pipeline. You can click on new button and then choose new release pipeline. This is the new release pipeline and there are templates also available. Like for example, in release pipeline also you will find templates for different types of deployment. Let me show you an example of ASP.NET. You can deploy ASP.NET application on IIS using this ready to use template file. If I click apply, it should appear like this. It is under pipelines. You have to first click on pipelines and then the submenu will show options like pipeline, environment, and releases. Check that. OK, looks like release pipeline is not enabled for you. In that case, it should be under pipeline releases. If there are no pipelines, you can create a new one. Anyway, I will show you what is the purpose of release pipeline. Release pipeline, let's start with the empty one. Release pipeline looks like this. You need a build artifact and then you need stages. Do you know that most of the modern applications are deployed in multiple stages like dev environment, QA environment, staging, pre-production, and then production environment. And you can replicate it here, that structure. Check if you are able to create a new release pipeline. Click on pipeline first. And under pipeline, the submenu should give you these options. Did you not get any of these options? Environment, release, library, task group. OK, I got it. You have to enable. Yeah, you have to enable it from the organization setting. I got it. That another enable button that you need to use. Check the pipeline settings and under pipeline setting, you need to remove this. Disable creation of cl classic release pipeline. This option you need to turn it off. Under organization settings. Disable creation of classic pipeline should be off.
OK. So once you switch this off, you should be able to create a release pipeline for your project now. Once you turn this off, go to the pipelines now and check if you can now see option to create release pipeline. OK, don't select any template. Let's create an empty pipeline. New release pipeline. The empty release pipeline will look like this. Select empty. Unfortunately, why we cannot use any of these template because release pipeline require an environment to deploy your application. So either there has to be a machine VM ready or there has to be something like Azure Web App ready where you can deploy your application. Now we do not have any target application environment. OK, so just select the empty job. And this will create an empty release pipeline. In the release pipeline, we take our application, already built application, to first environment or first stage, run some task into it, then take it to second stage, run some task on it, and then finally put it on production. So let me show you an example now. This is the empty release pipeline. It requires artifact, build artifact. So when you click on it, there is an option to choose build artifact here. Can you see this? So in release pipeline, you need to pick build artifact and you can select which pipeline, build pipeline to use. So that means the other pipeline, the build pipeline is supposed to create the application and that application will be picked up by release pipeline. Can you try adding a release pipeline and then inside release pipeline add the build artifact? OK, fine. After that, in stage one, if I click on stage one, these are the details of stage one. And if I click on that job details, the stage one currently has no job. In stage one, there are several deployment jobs you can try. Like, for example, you can deploy ARM template if you have the template files. You can run AWS CLI commands. Or you can deploy to Azure App Service. If you have Azure App Service created somewhere, you can take and deploy your application to Azure App Service. But right now I do not have any such thing. So what I'll do, I will instead use a utility command called command line. OK, now this is just a utility one. And let me just write here hello world. So this is my staging environment, first staging environment. Is that clear? I'm not deploying application because I do not have target environment ready. That's why I'm not doing it right. OK, so let's say this is a sample step. Real life project, you will have deployment task. Now this is 
this is the first stage. Let's go back to the pipeline and back to the pipeline. Do you know that you can even clone the stages? Now let's copy the stage and give it a name stage two with exact same steps. And can you see the line connecting them? What do you think this line is all about? This is the sequence in which it will carry out all the tasks. So it will first collect the artifact, deploy them to stage one, run all the tasks in stage one, then move to stage two. OK, like that. Try to create it. With this structure, I'm using command line task. Can you see this? OK, what I did was I'm creating a release pipeline. I'm starting from scratch now. I created a new release pipeline like this. Initially, it will offer me some templates. I will reject them by using empty job button. Right? Yeah, so here I need to add a build artifact and here I need to add stage. OK. This is build pipeline and this is release pipeline. This is continuous integration and this is for continuous delivery and deployment workflows. OK. Release pipeline expect build pipeline to already be present and they must have already built an application or application must already be built by this build pipeline and release pipeline will just take that existing build artifact and deploy them so release pipeline is only for deployment and this pipeline is for building the project Uh, yes, Manish. Now there is a small difference. If you use YAML pipeline, YAML pipelines, it is possible that your single YAML pipeline can do both the activities, that is build and release. Is that clear? A YAML pipeline, a single YAML pipeline can implement both the workflows, integration and deployment, whereas classic pipeline are always separate. Classic build pipeline will only do the build and classic release pipeline will do only release. Is that clear? In release pipeline, there is no separate YAML option. You have to use this pipeline only for build and release both. So if you use YAML, single pipeline can do build and release. But if you use classic, then it must be separate. OK. Yeah. Now let's save this. I will have to just add one task here. There is no task added, so I will just add one utility task, a utility task called command task. I'm just adding a utility task, command line task, and inside command line, I'm just using this hello world echo statement. So this is the task. You can see one job, one task. Here I have added one command line task. Go back to the pipeline, and I can now clone it. Clone means I can create one more clone of the stage, stage two. So now my application will be built. It will be collected by the release pipeline and it will be deployed in stage one and stage two respectively. Try creating structure like this in release pipeline.
Okay, so in case if you have three modules in a single project, Harvinder, how they are organized? Do you have three different Git repositories? Or just one single repository and, and folder inside it? Single repository with folder, then you have to tweak your build and release pipeline to look for a particular folder. Like what you can do, for example, if it is a build pipeline, then inside your build pipeline, you have to make sure that you are building a correct folder, correct project. So to for example, to give you an example, when you are building this project, can you see the project selection here? It is saying pro uh, folder so and so and project so and so. Now what if you have multiple projects in a single repository? Then in that case, you might have to build both of them separately, maybe in a same pipeline or in a different pipeline. You can customize it as per your choice, by the way. Okay. Uh, so you have to manually add the task and make sure you provide the correct pro project file. Now for .NET, it was solution file. For Java, it would be pom.xml, right? Something like that. Are you all able to create the release pipeline as well? Yes, you can have multiple version of the same pipeline. You can act actually create just multiple pipelines. If you want multiple version of same pipeline, use YAML because YAML would be checked in inside your Git repository. So just like any other file in Git repository, you will have multiple version of the configuration file, uh, pipeline file as well. Any question about pipeline? Job one, task one, that means the release pipeline, every stage can have one or more job and every job can have one or more task. Job one, task one means in that particular stage, there is only one job in that state and only one task inside that job. So when you click on it, it will allow you to add more tasks or add more jobs into it, basically. OK, now let's see. No, no, stages are for release pipeline. OK, because your application move from one environment to another environment. So let's say once application is ready, you put it in staging environment, run some test, then you put it in pre-production environment, run some additional test, test, and then you finally move it to production environment. Many a time application has to move from one environment to another environment, and that environment is referred to as stage in release pipeline. OK. Fine. 
Okay, I guess we deleted the release pipeline I created. Is it saved already? Yeah, it is saved. So this was the release uh, pipeline. Let me add this command task quickly and I will show you how it runs. Command, command line. And let's say there is only hello world inside it. Let's create a clone of it. So you can have more than one stage. Right? Yes, you will get the recording. Page two. And now let's save this. Let's create the release. Now once the release pipeline is created, we can hit create release button to start releasing it. So let's see what happens now. Release one is getting created. If you want to see the progress, click on release one and it will show you that it is currently in a queue mode. Queue means, queue means it is waiting for Microsoft Azure DevOps to provide a build agent for it. Yes, it received the agent. Now it's running stage one. In stage one, it has to download the artifact, use the command line script, and then it will move to stage two. Now stage two is in a queue. Did you notice that? This is release pipeline. So what we'll do now after this, we'll take a break and post break we will discuss AZ400 exam and all the details about it. AZ400 Microsoft certification. I'm able to run it because I, I do have parallel jobs. OK, you need minimum one parallel job to run both build and release pipeline. Release pipeline also need an agent, right? What I did is running the pipeline means creating a release. So what I did is I selected the pipeline and then I hit this button create release that will start the pipeline. Now this pipeline has already run at least once and this is the release one. If you want the individual logs, like let's see the logs generated by stage one. These are the logs. Initialize, download the build artifact, run command line, and then finalize, clean up. Similarly, stage two log. These are the logs for stage two as well. This is command line task. Okay. So now we will take a small 10 minutes break and post break, we will discuss AZ400, the certification exam, its scope, coverage, and all the other details. We'll take a break now, and uh, after 10 minutes, we'll continue. Uh, hello, guys. Oh, uh, hello, guys. Uh, those who are still remaining with the bed, please.
redeem your badge in chat box and also put done on a chat box after redeem your badge. Still many people are remaining to redeem that batch. Please guys go and redeem your batch.
OK, we are back now. Can we continue? Hello? Yes, sir. OK, OK, fine. I hope all of you have uh, redeemed your batches also. Yeah. So in AZ400, overall AZ400 as a certification exam or as a certification module focus on a tool called Azure DevOps. Recently, Microsoft has introduced one more additional component to AZ400, and that is GitHub, GitHub as a DevOps platform. So AZ400 now will cover DevOps with Microsoft Azure DevOps and GitHub, both the DevOps platform. It covers features like the standard DevOps practices, Azure board, Azure repos, Azure pipeline. OK, these four components. Sorry, these three components. OK, and little bit of Azure artifact as well. Now, AZ400, as I told you, there are lots of labs and there is lots of learning material also available on Microsoft website. Let me show you that. If you go to Microsoft.com slash learn. OK, or Microsoft.com slash learning from here, you can refer to the material available for AZ400. I'll, I'll share the link just a minute. AZ400. OK, here it is. And this is the self based learning for AZ400. This is the first module DevOps transformation journey, enterprise DevOps, PI, the one that we discussed now, release strategy, continuous deployment, and so on. You will notice there are around eight to nine modules in AZ400. And if you want to actually, you know, learn entire AZ400 track, right? There are two options, either a minimum five days classroom training program, or you can supplement that with this online self based learning. Here it is. Right, this is the URL where you can find more information about it. Now AZ400, just like any other Microsoft certification exam, AZ400 is MCQ based. That means. The exam will actually ask you all multi choice questions. There will be multiple multi choice questions in an exam. And you will have to score. You will have to score 70 percent to successfully finish successfully complete and pass the exam. OK, 70 percent is the passing criteria. Now, if you took if you look at the module wise weightage, now this is the weightage for overall exam. AZ 400 as an exam has uh, OK, this is the recent update that happened on January 29. Uh, yes, Prith, the classroom trainings usually you will be supplied with an Azure subscription. OK, and using that Azure subscription, you can set up your Azure DevOps subscription as well. You can create a self hosted agent. You will be setting up a self hosted agent to actually execute your build and release pipeline. So you don't have to worry about that restriction Microsoft has put on parallel jobs. You can deploy your own self hosted agent for that. We will use Azure as your cloud. OK, there are labs environment labs available. Multiple labs are available. By the way, uh, total number of labs, I guess is around 11 or 12 out of which most of them are optional, right? So around seven to eight labs we do. OK. The weightage wise now, weightage wise configuring process and communication. Now this is actually DevOps. The conceptual part is given 10 to 15 percent weightage. 15 to percent per, uh, 15 to 20 percent weightage is given to Git. Now when I say Git, it's a, it's talking about Git version control system, Azure repo Git and GitHub Git repository. The weightage given to these modules is 15 to 20 percent. Next. Weightage given here is design and implement build and release pipeline, which is 40 to 45 percent. Now this is Azure pipeline. This covers Azure pipeline. This covers release pipeline. Azure pipeline means the classic and YAML both. OK, then developing security and compliance plan. For 
for DevSecOps, another weightage of 10 to 15 percent is given and for monitoring instrumentation there is another 10 to 15 percent weightage given in az400 i will explain you these two points also what they are if you visit the link you will notice all these modules are already there for the self study right like for example if you go to this one for example right the module itself is neatly organized into multiple sub modules right and every sub module will have a knowledge check question at the end these are the sub modules okay fine now az400 after attending this today's one day training you are receiving a course completion badge the course completion badge is an indicator that you can use everywhere maybe in social media accounts that you have successfully attended az400 session okay this is basically an achievement badge that you get that you have attended a session like that okay now az400 as a as a module there are lots of labs involved let me give you a quick hint or quick look into some of the labs just a minute Yeah, this is for example one lab. This is for example one lab. Now most of the labs, now this Azure DevOps labs application actually contains lot many additional labs than what is already covered in AZ400. Not all of them are covered in AZ400. Okay. Anyways, like for example, this one is covered. Okay. Working with pull request is covered. Agile is covered. Continuous integration is covered. OK, these are covered and I guess there are a few more like deployment to multi container application is also covered. OK, and uh, automating infrastructure deployment in cloud with Terraform is also covered, but this is an optional one. This is basically only if participant know what Terraform is. OK, or have experienced with Terraform. Fine. And there are some lots of additional other labs that you can try for all the lab. All the instructions and everything are already provided to you. Only thing is you need as your subscription and as your DevOps subscription to actually carry out these labs. Without these subscriptions, you won't be actually practically able to implement any of these labs. You can read the instructions, but that's it. OK, any question about AZ400 exam pattern? Or AZ400 exam? Anyone? OK, no. Fine. <clears throat> Let us continue. So here in AZ400, uh, the modules like Git, like this is about the Git. There will be a demo on Git. Demo with Azure repo and GitHub both. With Azure repo, I gave you a small demo where we actually try to perform uh, this operation, uh, creation of pull request there. And inside Azure DevOps, I was able to create the uh, pipeline, build and release pipeline. OK, now let me give you one one of my sample project to try. OK, I want you to try creating. Uh, try importing the project first and then create a pipeline out of it. It this is just one activity for all of you. Just give me a minute. This time my project is not on Azure DevOps. It is on my GitHub repository. Let me choose the project. Let's try this. Uh, wait a second. Yeah, let's try this. This is a Java application. Wait a second. There is containerization involved. Let's not use that.
Yeah, let's try this. What is interesting about this particular GitHub repository is that there are two projects inside it. One is front end and one is back end. Front end is Angular project and back end is Java project. Now, what I want you to do is I will share the repository URL with all of you. I want you to try a very simple activity. First, create a new empty project in Azure DevOps. How to create a new empty project in Azure DevOps? Make sure you are in Azure DevOps homepage. You can click on this logo to go to the homepage and click on new project button. Can you see no new project button? Yes. Now in this new project. Here I will give this project a name. Let's say project name is project 001. You can either make it public or private, but make sure the version control system is always Git. Git should be your version control system. OK, let me select Git. So Git is selected. Guess what now? Project is ready, but right now there is nothing in the repository. Can you see here? What does it say? Is it saying project 001 is empty and you need to add some code to it? Did you notice that? Hello? So what you can do, you can import an existing repository. Now, if you just scroll down, look at the third option. Can you see the third option, which is import a repository? Click on import button and just copy paste my GitHub repository URL here. You don't need authentication. This is anonymous access enabled for this repository, or this is a public repository. So just copy paste the address, import, and my entire GitHub project will appear in your Azure repo. Can you do that? And also, can you create a build pipeline for two projects inside this repository? One Java project and one Angular project. Can you do that? I will give you a hint. You need to create two pipelines, one for building Angular project and one for building Java project. OK. They are in two different directories.
Okay, now the pipeline part, you can create either classic or YAML pipeline, whichever one you feel like. Okay, but please remember while creating a pipeline, remember you have to create two build pipelines, one build pipeline for .NET, uh, sorry, Java project and one build pipeline for this Angular project. Okay, by the way, when, when creating a pipeline, Azure DevOps should give you a ready-made options or template to choose from. Okay, first you try and then I will show you how to do this. Okay. Okay, I believe you have already tried this out, so I will show you what you can do. I will create a pipeline. Now you have option to either create classic pipeline or YAML pipeline. You can choose any one. Yes, Ritesh, for Java project use Maven. Let me show you an example. I'm selecting classic pipeline for this particular repository. After I click next, let us search for Maven because this project is a Maven project. Apply. Now, please remember the default Maven project expect pom.xml to be in the root folder. Now, this you need to change. Go to the pipeline first option here. And here you need to wait a second. Agent I'm going to use here is Linux, Ubuntu. Actually, for Java project, you can use Windows as well. And then when it asks you for Maven POM file, just click on the three dot button and make sure you provide the correct path. Like for example, my pom.xml is inside this backend folder. Are you getting my point? So it should be backend slash pom.xml. Rest everything is fine. Now this pipeline can build and package Maven project. Okay, let me save this with a name Maven build. Let's save it, not queue it. Okay, so this is my one pipeline Maven build. Now, can I create another pipeline? Yes. 
let's create another classic pipeline for the angular project same repository again and this time for angular project i'm going to use node based template can you see the options available but i guess i'm not sure whether grunt and gulp will work here anyway let's try to apply it okay i have selected one of them agent specification i'll again i'm going to use ubuntu first is npm install now you need to provide the folder that contain package.json now do we have anybody here who has worked with angular react or any js based technology can you tell us where basically package.json is located in your project anyone package.json is basically yes it's the root folder but in our case it is a subfolder called front end did you notice that because our repository contain two projects and both the projects have their own parent directory so front end and there is oh, wait a second another small change instead of package.json we have angular.json can you see this so we will have to select the angular.json file that's fine no worries we don't actually have any grunt task here so i will just delete this archive the file for npm install let me check if i can use some other command uh i'm not sure but npm publish should also work right no publish will not work because it will try to find something let's use custom npm custom and the command i'm going to use here by the way any idea how to uh, build angular project anyone <clears throat> let's see what solution we have okay ng build ng build command will do that project folder rod no we are not using any such thing npm start and npm start will start run start to run it and npm install will install the dependencies ng build is the command but i'm not sure we should use ng build here ng build double hyphen prod fine so let's try to use this here so npm command let's use the build command and for this command we will use parameter prod then in the archive file let's select the right folder now what i am actually expecting here is this front end this front end inside the front end it must create a folder called dist and i want all the contents of that dist folder are you getting my point yes and that i want to convert it into a zip file and once it is converted to zip file we will publish the zip file so these are the steps now you will notice i'm using custom npm task npm build double hyphen prod okay and then get the files and publish them let's save this as well so you will notice there are two pipelines now we have how many pipelines two pipelines one for building maven and the other one for building angular project let me change this name OK, so one is Angular, one is. Uh, this one Java project, what I can do now is I can even create a relation between them, like let's go to Maven build. Edit and let's do one thing in a trigger. I'll say build completion add build completion. I want other pipeline to build as well. You know what does it mean? Anyone? What does this mean? It means 
every time I build a Maven project, after completing Maven project build, it will automatically start building Angular project as well. Now let's save and build Maven project. Let's see what happens. OK, it has started now. Yes, that's right. So both of them will execute one after other. First would be Java, then would be Angular. OK, looks like it's now building the Maven project here. You can see the task. Maven is downloading all the dependencies for my project. So looks like my Maven project has built successfully. If I now go back to the pipelines, right? You will notice Angular build has not run yet. I guess it should start as well. I'm not sure why Angular build is not started. It should actually start. In real world, it is preferred to use YAML. Use classic editor pipeline only if you are using a different, uh, let's say, version control system like SVN or TFVC. Uh, there is no need of a separate editor because when you are creating YAML pipeline, YAML file, it will validate contents immediately and it will run a validation as well. Inline validation, you can say. OK, now let's just run this manually. The Angular one. I'm not sure because the command I'm not sure about it. NPM uh, build. Let's see. Looks like the command didn't work. There is no such command called. Uh, Not a directory. OK, fine. It was expecting a directory path, not a file path. Edit. NPM. So what was expected here? Was just a folder path. Maybe this is because this project is little older one. Newer Angular projects won't have any issues uh, getting built. Let's wait for it. A new fresh build is started. Yes, OK, YAML file, you can edit it directly from the pipeline editor, right? And it will do the uh, syntax check. OK, looks like uh, this also didn't work.
OK, you should write NPM run build, not just build. Yes, you are right, Arvinder. So basically one way to you know figure out exact thing is just you know repeat like this. So here I'll say run and then build. Save and queue. But once you are able to build one Angular project for second project, obviously you can just use the same steps from this working pipeline. Many a time, if you want to correctly find out how to build a particular project, you should basically ask the developer who's working on the project. Right? You do expect a developer to know how to build the project he's working on, right? You being a DevOps engineer may not have a correct command to build it, but developers, they should be able to help with that. I guess even the npm run build command didn't work. Uh, okay. The ng was not found. OK, I got it. I got it. This is because. Now this is I'll tell you this is going to be the last one. Don't worry. I will have to first try npm install. And then try after npm install. I will try angular build. How to do the angular build now? Instead of install, I will use custom. And here I will use run build broad. Now it should work. So first run the normal install command and then angular build command. This will work now. Now what will happen is install command will also install angular CLI. So this is how you can create a pipeline, a build pipeline. OK, about the security part now, while the build is still happening, about the security part, Azure DevOps also allows us uh, to integrate some other security features in your CI CD workflows. What kind of security features are available? We call it DevSecOps. The security feature is a traditional continuous integration workflow looks like this. A traditional continuous integration workflow looks like this. Get the source code. Right? First you get the source code, then what do you do? Install the dependencies like the command that we use npm install is actually for installing dependencies. Then build or package application. So you get the application binary, right? And then upload or transfer the artifact, build artifact. It's because now why do you need to upload or transfer build artifact immediately after build is completed? It's because when you are using Microsoft hosted build agent, the build agents are shared. Shared means you will use a build agent to build your project and after your build is complete, Microsoft is going to remove that build agent from you and give that build agent to somebody else to build their project. And while doing that, it will completely sanitize it. Sanitize means it will delete everything from that machine. So whatever project you have built is going to be completely, completely erased from the build agent. That's because you are using a kind of build agent which is shared build agent, right? So what you should do to preserve your build artifact, immediately upload them, transfer them, right? So you got the build artifact. This is a traditional one. You know what is DevSecOps? Do this, but in addition to this, use some additional tool to make sure that your code is perfectly fine or whatever code you have developed, your developers have developed, that code is a quality code. There are some external tools available that you can use, and in AZ400 or in Azure DevOps, there is integration available with such tools. Now, what tools are available here? So after you install the dependencies, you can add two more steps here. Step number one, 
can OSS libraries for vulnerabilities. Now, what is package vulnerabilities? Actually, it's not always package vulnerabilities, but you should also check if you are using any OSS library which is too old or no longer maintained. OK. So you should scan. Also, you should also do one more thing for your code. You should also check your code for technical depth. Or just check for the bad code. Now there are some extra tools or there are some extensions available that can actually help you to do that. Let me show you an example. Now these extensions may or may not be available to us right now. So I will show you an old project of mine where I have already implemented it. Just have to go back to my parts unlimited, old parts unlimited project. OK, this is my parts unlimited project. This is the same parts unlimited website. And. Let me show you something interesting here. About this project. Let's own oh, there is no such report here available. Let's go to the pipeline. Look at the report generated by an additional external tool. Yes, I will show you that Harvinder. There are two options. Either you upload your build artifact to additional storage, which is called Azure Pipeline Artifact Storage, or you can even upload it to a file share. OK, looks like this project is not able to scan anything. Let's try another project. I do have multiple projects here where I have used these services. This must be the one. Pipeline, white source bolt. Yeah, here it is. Let's look at this report, which is currently getting loaded. You will notice few things white source bolt or which is now transferred or rebranded as mend soft. OK, what see, see what this tool is actually doing. This will create a proper report about all the dependencies I have used in this project. Hmm. Can you see can you see the report now? Hello? Yes, dependency tracker or dependency check. There could be multiple tools available, Ritesh. This may not be the only tool, right? OWASP, yes, OWASP also provides such type of tool. So you will notice here, my, my build pipeline is complaining that I'm using a dependency which is too old. Like this cookies 3.0.1 is a very old dependency, and there is a small vulnerability of DOS, denial of service attack. And what is the recommendation here? Recommendation is I should use version 3.1.25 or 5.0 or 6.0.5. So they are giving me correct version that I should use. So these are the vulnerabilities. Other than that, it is also telling me whether uh, what is the security distribution? High vulnerable component, medium vulnerable component and low vulnerable component. And this is the vulnerability status of your code. How did I get this report? It was already generated, but let me show you my existing pipeline. Let me show you the pipeline which has actually. Generated this. I will show you the edit. Now this pipeline will not work, but let me show you the task that I have added here. Can you see this? Just after getting the dependencies using NuGet restore, what task I have added here? White source bold. So every time my project runs, it, the white source will check my package dependencies and create a report and that report will be added here next to the pipeline. I guess it is here in the pipeline menu last option. What is benefit of this report? You can make sure that whatever code your team is building, that code is good enough. It's a quality code. Is that clear? 
and please remember white source is not the only tool your team might be using some other tool so what if you want to check whether the tool that your team use can be integrated with azure devops azure devops has something called azure devops marketplace let's go to marketplace here you can search for whatever tool you are looking for like OWASP has dependency tracker tool. Can you see this? Hello? Ritesh? Right? This is OWASP dependency checker tool. You can get this tool free or this extension free in Azure DevOps. Click on get it free. I'm in Azure DevOps marketplace and I'm going to install this in my Azure DevOps subscription. This is a free tool, by the way. OWASP anyway is an open, uh, open source community. Okay. Uh, most of the OWASP tools, as per my knowledge, are freely available. Do you also use uh, OWASP Z, Z attack proxy? Okay, fine. Let's install dependency check extension done proceed to the organization oh wait it's not able to redirect the old url did no longer works fine let's go back here now that i have enabled it if you want instead of building your project like this if you want to use owasp dependency tracker i can try making use of it so let's say for example i will try i will try my project project 001 and inside project 001 let me go to the pipeline the one that works maven pipeline and inside this maven pipeline let me add one task let's see if i can see this OWASP task here can you see dependency check tool let's add it so i want this task to run immediately after maven what is the name of project project name is backend and the scan path for the project is this backend directory. Okay. Uh, report generated should be HTML. That's fine. And that's fine. Let's save and queue. I'm not sure how uh, dependency check tool work on Java project. I believe it will just look for form.xml, right? And get the dependencies from it. Let's wait for it. So dependencies are getting downloaded through Maven. Maven is doing the build tool, uh, try, uh, typical build operation. And after that, OWASP dependency check tool will run. How do you run dependency check? You run it manually, right? OK, let's wait for it. So these type of tool, external tool integration is possible with Azure DevOps. Now, as far as AZ400 is concerned, uh, the integration with white source pulled and integration with Sonar Cube is already included. OK, both the things are included integration and you will even see a uh, lab environment or a lab provided for the same. OK, looks like dependency check has started, but it has not found anything. No NVD API key provided. OK, fine. Anyways, let's check. If you want to know where is the HTML file, looks like it is generating HTML file here. Backend, home, backend. So maybe in the same path, it will generate the HTML report. Not sure about that. Okay, looks like it has to download some package, some binary. It's already doing that binary download. 4% it is at. 
Okay, so basically integration allows you like that. So there are tools available. Other tool available is Sonar. How many of you have used Sonar? Sonar Cube. The other tool that you should use or you could use along with Azure DevOps is Sonar, Sonar Cloud. Now let me show you an example of Sonar Cloud as well. I have already built some software, some scan on Sonar Cloud. Uh, yeah, one more thing before you even ask. Sonar Cube and Sonar Cloud are both related. Sonar Cube is the open source version that you can run anywhere for free. And Sonar Cloud, on the other hand, is a SaaS solution. Software as a service kind of a solution. What does it mean? It means that you can simply not you, you simply do not need to install anything on your environment. You can just sign up and use Sonar Cloud directly. It will run on their own cloud environment. Let us use my Azure DevOps account to log in into Sonar Cloud. Yes, you can sign up using your Azure DevOps subscription into Sonar Cloud. Let's see. The URL is sonarcloud.io, and these are my projects. Can you see for one of my sample project? Okay, there is Sonar Cube or Sonar Cloud has already done some scan. And let me show you the scan results here for the main branch. How many bugs were detected? How many bugs detected? 32. How many code smell? 564. How many security vulnerabilities? 30. Security hotspot? 80. So you can see all the details here. If you want more detail, just click on it. Let's see what are those 32 bugs. Now these are the 32 bugs here. Like for example, this might be intentionally implemented or this might be intentional. So there is a clear notice that it is intentional. Change the condition so that it does not always evaluate to false. Now let's click on it and let's see where it is. So basically it is actually showing me where the issue was found. Can you see this? Hello? You know the objection here? Objection is you have declared a Boolean variable and you have assigned value true to it. You know what does it mean? It means it will always assume that everything is true and then start. Basically, when you write Boolean condition, what is the common best practice? Best practices always you start with default value, which is false. For Boolean variable, default should be false, but this is using true. OK, so this type of core smell can be detected. OK, so Sonar can be integrated with Azure Pipeline. Either you install Sonar Cube in your machine and then provide details to Azure DevOps, or you can use Sonar Cloud, a cloud subscription. How many of you have tried using Sonar or Sonar Cube? Have you integrated Sonar Cube with Jenkins, for example? If you have done that, you can do that kind of integration with Azure DevOps as well. I will show you how you can do that as well. OK. Yeah, we will end the session around at 5 PM. OK, uh, after 15 minutes. You use Sonar Cube, fine. So for Sonar Cube, you have to install and run it from a machine, right? Let's just wait for the dependency checker to complete and then I will show you a demo on how to integrate it with the Sonar. Use of Sonar Cloud is easy. What you can just do is I will show you. If you have created, if you have already created Azure DevOps account, just visit sonarcloud.io and when you visit sonarcloud.io, it will give you the sign up button. Click on sign up. When you click sign up, they have provided options here. You can use Sonar Cloud for free if you have any one of these accounts. Can you see this? So if you have a GitHub account, if you have a Bitbucket account, if you have a GitLab account, and if you have a Azure DevOps account, you can sign up on Sonar Cloud and create a free account on Sonar Cloud as well. So log in with your Azure DevOps account here and create your own Sonar Cloud account. Okay. 
once you create your own Sonar Cloud account, Sonar Cloud use token based authentication. I guess I guess you people know about token based authentication, personal access token instead of using username and password. The tool is still downloading. Yes. So what you can do is for integration with Sonar inside Sonar. Now this step is I guess same for Sonar Cube and Sonar Cloud. First, what you have to do is start analyzing new project. So you can see there is an option here. Analyze new project. Provide the organization name and then provide the project name. Let's call this project PRJ001. So this is my new project key. Mahindra underscore PRJ001. This is my public project. Please remember Sonar Cube is free only for public project, not for paid project, closed project. Then I don't have any kind of previous code, so we will just compare it on number of days. OK, and let's create the project. So I'm creating a new project now. I'm creating a new project now. After I create a new project, what I will do? Where I'm going to use it. You can integrate it directly with Azure DevOps, but I'm not going to use this option. I'm going to show you a manual option. Use manual. Here it is. What kind of project you are building? Is it a Maven project? If it is a Maven project, you need these things. OK, for a Maven project, you need these things. You need a Sonar token with value like this, and you can just place these values somewhere. Uh, somewhere in your build pipeline. OK. So fine, so let's do one thing. What I will do is OK, it is still running. I don't know why it's taking so long. I should just cancel this. You got the idea right about the dependency check. You can cancel an ongoing uh, pipeline if you just click cancel and then yes, it won't be canceled immediately. It will give some grace period of couple of seconds. Done. Now inside this pipeline, let me add something. The Maven build. Edit. I don't want the dependency check, so I will delete this and instead I will add Sonar Cube. How to add Sonar Cube? First of all, let's go to. Let's go to the project settings. From project setting, I'll go to the service connection. Where is service connection? And from service connection, let's create a new service connection for Sonar. OK, Sonar Cloud. Here I need to provide the access token. So what I'll do is I will use this access token. Can you see what I'm doing? And click verify. Yes, done. Let's give it a name. OK. And grant permission to all pipeline. That means this token can be used by any pipeline in my project. Fine. So I created a Sonar Cloud authentication token and I'm already assigned this token to my Azure DevOps project. Now let's go back to the project. To the pipeline, this pipeline, and let's edit this. Instead of this task over here, I'm going to add Sonar task. So let's add Sonar. You will notice there is a task here available for preparing analysis, run code analysis, and then finally publish. So prepare analysis. How do I prepare analysis? In prepare analysis, we need just the Sonar Cube connection string and Sonar organization name. Right now, this is part of organization called Mahindra. Integrate it with Maven or use standalone. You can use standalone also, or you can integrate it with Maven. Integrate it with Maven means you have to modify your Maven file. What are the parameters to provide? You can provide parameters like project name, for example. What is the project name? Now here they are saying you should edit your pom.xml file. Can you see this? You should add this to your product uh, pom.xml file, and then this should be the command to verify. So what I will do is. You need environment variable sonar token. I guess this is done already. I can just add a task like this. Let's use standalone. OK, and here let's provide some properties. 
do I have any properties file here? No. Let's provide the project details manually. Now, what is the project detail? The project detail here is name of my project. Name of the project is PRJ001. So PRJ001. Sorry, this is Mahindra underscore PRJ001. Name of the project is PRJ001. Project version 001. So project key must match with what key you have decided earlier. For source directory, it should be the backend SRC folder. This is where my source code is, right? And then other properties. Other properties, uh, I guess the other properties mentioned here are sonar token and the value of sonar token. So sonar token is equal to, and let me provide the value from here. OK, this may not be required because we have already created a service connection, right? So it can get the value from the service connection only. Fine. OK, so prepare analysis. Then here I will add a task run analysis. So now. Run code analysis in run code analysis. What I'll do, I will use built in Java 11. OK to run the sonar analysis and after analysis, what I will do next? Publish the result. There are too many tasks, right? Yes. Done. Now that everything is done, let me save and build this. Save this. Wait a second. I guess the poem.xml modification is not done. This I need to do. Right. So let's go back to the repo. Backend. Inside backend, I'll go for pom.xml and let's edit the pom.xml file. Somewhere in pom.xml file, I need to make some changes. I need to add some properties here. These two properties I need. This two. Okay. The organization name and sonar host URL. Let's save, commit, and let's go and run the pipeline now. Let's see what happens. This pipeline will now run. It will build the project and it will also scan the project on sonar. Right now, here for the sonar queue, there is no details available for the project. But after I successfully build it, let's see what happens. Prepare analysis has completed successfully. OK, fine. Now Maven is building the project and finally once Maven do the build project, it will then go and run uh, Sonar Cube analysis and then it will publish the report. Now looks like there is one question from Harvinder. Can we add user restrictions on release and pipeline actions? Yes, Azure DevOps has its own built in RBAC where in case if you are using Azure DevOps with a team, for individual team members, you can assign certain permissions like a person allowed to use Git repository, but cannot cannot modify a pipeline. Sorry, pipeline can be modified if it is Git. OK, cannot change the agent pool or cannot change any other configuration. Cannot add new user. You can even create a user with read only access. A user should be able to just see log of previous build but should not be able to create a new build. For more detail, what you can do is go back to project setting from project setting, go to permissions and can you see the different built in roles? Yes, contributor, endpoint creator, project administrator, readers, release administrator only do release. Yes, sonar configuration for .NET would be also same. Only thing is, in case of .NET, there won't be pom.xml. By the way, in case if you want one for .NET, here select .NET and Sonar Cube, Sonar Cloud will show you how to do this with .NET MS Build and .NET .NET CLI. Oh, I guess both of them now use .NET tool only. Can you see this? 
Sonar will provide you instructions for both .NET Java application. Looks like running code analysis as failing here. Version of Java used to run this analysis is deprecated and Sonar Cloud no longer supported. OK, this is new. Looks like Sonar now supports Java 17 only. Fine. Let's edit the pipeline and change this. Change this to Java 17. And save and queue. I thought Java 11 is still supported now. Java 11 is LTS version of Java and uh, as per Oracle plan, LTS version of Java is supported for around seven to eight years. Any question anyone? Any question? Let's wait for the pipeline to finish and I will show you the report generated by Sonar. Yeah, sure. M meanwhile, while the project is still building, I will take you to the project settings. User RBAC is built in into Azure DevOps. Can you see the number of roles available here? Contributors, build, project, reader, etc. Let me show you an example. Let's say there is already one user here, and if you want to add this user a certain roles and privileges, what you can do is you can add users certain privileges, like for example, sorry, permissions. Like for example, do you want this particular person to be able to delete the team project? Yes, no, or inherit? Manage project properties, yes, no, inherit. Board, yes, no, inherit. Test plan, yes, no, inherit. If you want permissions for pipeline, you should go to the pipelines and inside pipeline, you can check for the pipeline setting as well. Now, these are pipeline settings, triggers and everything. Project configuration, team configuration. Right now, we have just one team. Wait a second, it should be here. This is the only team. And this is the only user. There is only one user, so I won't be able to assign any permissions to myself. But these are different users and these are different groups available. OK, if you want to create a new group, you can do create it like this and then assign permissions or privileges to that user. Is that clear? These are release settings. How many how long you need to really maintain the release? For example, retain the release that you can set. OK. Let's go back to the pipeline. Looks like it's still failing and this time it could be something else. Project contain dot Java file. Please provide compiled classes with sonar binary property or exclude them with analysis, sonar exclusion property. OK, it was actually expecting dot class file, not dot Java file. Run code analysis. And. Prepare analysis, sorry. In prepare analysis, we have used these properties. Sonar token I have provided. And instead of SRC main, let me provide inside a backend. OK, let's just provide the backend folder. Yes, Nasir, I will tell you what why this happened. Whenever you are using git command line, please always check what user you have logged in. If you are using local version of Git, always do this. Git config double hyphen global. 
Now you will notice one thing. Global list. Sorry. Can you see my username and user email? Nasir? Yes. Now what happens is whenever you perform any git push operation, whenever you perform git push operation, the git push operation will check your registered credentials. There might be a possibility that your credentials refer to your organization account, but in your git config, you are using your personal account and it might be possible that once once sometime back only one time you tried using personal account with git, but you did it for global setting, not for local setting. So what you should do, change this global setting and inside global setting, use your organization ID instead of personal ID. And whenever for a particular repository, if you want to create an exception, like in this repository, I will use my personal, uh, uh, personal email account, then you should use local configuration, local setting. Are you getting my point? Don't set global username and user email address. Set it only for given repository only. We call it local config. Then there won't be an issue. Okay. Any other questions, anyone? Yeah, there is one question from Ritesh. Yes, there are scenario based questions. Scenario based questions means they will give you a scenario. Okay. They'll give you a scenario, and based on scenario, they will ask your opinion on that scenario, like which of the following option is better for it. Let's say, for example, they'll say there is a project that uses SVN repository. OK, and now you have to create. A build pipeline in Azure DevOps, so what you can do, can you create classic pipeline or YAML pipeline? Then you have to say classic because YAML is only for Git. Getting my point? Uh, I'm not sure last time I checked two years back, there were no practical questions in AZ 400. But now we have to verify. Wait a second. There is an exam guide available for AZ 400 that you can refer to for more details. There is also an exam sandbox available for you to try out. OK, you basically should try the exam uh, simulation to get a clear idea how the exam looks alike. Please remember the exam simulator is only for checking the UI of how certification exam looks alike. None of these questions from the simulator will actually come for the exam. They are dummy questions only. Are you getting my point? Anyway, I guess there was one link shared with all of you for the assessment. Did you notice that? Archie has already shared a link for the assessment. You can use that okay, for a small practical assessment. Yes. Anything, any questions, anyone? Any questions, any queries? What what you get here or what you have already received is a course completion badge. OK, for attending this session. There is no exam voucher associated with it. Uh, am I right, Archie? Hello?
OK, so for AZ 400 preparation, uh, there are lots of labs available. You can uh, visit the labs from azuredevopslabs.com. There is a learning material available on Microsoft Learning website. Yes, and uh, uh, there you will find a lot of content, some demos, etc., that you should try out. Then uh, there is a practice test link which is shared here, a small assessment for the today's uh, webinar. There is an assessment. There is an exam sandbox and uh, typically Microsoft exams, they they have around uh, uh, 37, 35 to 40 questions. Sometimes it might be lesser than that. OK, not all questions have same difficulty level. Some questions might be more difficult. Some questions would be relatively easier. OK, uh, there are questions sometimes which might have more than one correct answer. Even if it is MCQ, there are questions where more than one correct answer might be there. Like, but the question will actually tell you, like select all the correct answers. OK. For the exam sandbox, just a minute. Uh, it's available in AZ 400 exam link. I will just. You know, kind of. Give you the link which will take you there for the sandbox. Uh, please remember the sandbox is actually, you know, kind of a generic one for all Microsoft exams. This will just give you a look and feel of exam environment. Wait a second, this is a redirected link. This will not work. I have to give you the original link from where it got redirected here. Here it is. This is where you can find the self study guide. For AZ 400 details about AZ 400. And for exam sandbox, let me share the uh, the permanent link. This is the one. The last link I have shared is the exam sandbox. OK. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, provide your feedback and uh, also I guess uh, there are some uh, social channel links already shared here, right? So connect with us if you want to get more updates about upcoming session. OK, so feedback link is shared with all of you. You can see it on the message window here. Thank you very much everyone for joining the session. Uh, I will stay there on the on the chat for another 10 minutes. You have any questions or queries you can post it there on the chat window okay for another 10 minutes yes sir thank you for this wonderful session i hope all the participants found today's topic well if you have any question and queries please push, put question on chat box that will dare to answer you Yes, Mayu. Is it about a technology? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead.
Ya, hello Mayur. Hello. You can put your question here in a chat window instead. Okay, let's read. Uh, joined as DevOps, IP management, issue with CI CD every step works smoothly without any error, but UI related changes do not impact on deployment app. As I was using web app to deploy changes from CD, it happens only on .NET 7, but it works on ASP.NET 4.5. .NET 7 is .NET Core. Yes, that's right. That's right. See, in DevOps, uh, sorry, if it is about static resources, I did not understand the exact uh, query here, basically. Uh, so what I understood, I'll explain. So it is all about, you know, uh, changing the UI. Whatever changes you make to the UI, they are not actually appearing or they do not get reflected once your application is built and deployed. Is that the issue? Right. OK, so there could be one reason, one very simple reason. OK, many a time there is a concept called browser caching. You know, HTTP request and response, your web browsers might cache some of the response, right? So what you have to do is you have to either disable the caching or simply when you are testing your application in browser, press Control R to reload application instead of F5. OK, so static resources, it will force it to pull them. Number two, many a times your application, you might be using some kind of, uh, you know, caching mechanism for static content. Like some developers, they pull in all the static content using CDN. Check if your developers are using CDN, Content Delivery Network. There is a trend where all the website asset static contents are stored in CDN and website pull it from the CDN. So what happens is you have developed the project, you modified it. But when application is done in production, it's not pulling your CSS file, HTML file from the project directory. It's, it might be getting it from CDN. No CDN is used. Cleaning and incognito mode as well. This is actually a developer issue, basically. If you are not getting any error in CI CD pipeline, right, then most probably what you have to do is once application is running on the browser use browsers in uh, sorry developer console right control shift i and check what all assets are loaded means css html whatever is loaded and what is expected there check if there is any discrepancy like inside a project there might be a possibility that uh, when you make any changes to let's say a css file right in your dev environment, CSS file is modified, but the one that is loading in production environment might be still old one. So you have to go and check that. Use developer console to troubleshoot it.
I'm not sure how it actually is, uh, you know, working here. Basically, it works on ASP.NET 4.5, but it doesn't work on .NET 7. I don't have experience with .NET uh, 7 here, rather not with even with uh, .NET 4.5. So must be a .NET issue then. Yeah, thank you everyone. Guys, don't forget to fill this feedback form. I already shared on chat box. So guys, go and fill this feedback form. Mayur, this is domain expertise, basically, you are talking about. OK, so if you are working in IP management and you know nothing about IP management, that is called domain expertise. As a as a IT professional, uh, there are two different skill set you need to possess. One, the technical skill set, like you can say, I, I know Azure DevOps, I know GitHub, and I know multiple different technologies. That's your technical skill set. The other one is domain. OK, and domain is also equally important here, but you don't have to be completely expert in it.
I hope all the participants fill the feedback form. Uh, now let's end the webinar. See you in next webinar. Bye, guys.